are some neat tricks in PowerPoint that are pretty simple to do but can really spice up your presentations. Stay tuned for the tutorial. I do want to say that some of this is easier in PowerPoint 2010, but at the end of the video, I'll show you a workaround for earlier versions as well. Okay, let's begin. The tower sequence can be broken into three sections. Find the tower you will use. Reveal the tower with the crisscross movement you saw. And finally, move the sky in the background. First, let's select our tower or building. The trick to finding a good building is making sure that it contrasts really well to the sky and the general background. Here's what I chose, and you can find this in the Office Clip Art site with the keywords Building Clouds if you want to use it for practice. You also don't want the building to be touching anything else or have any part of it that blends in with the sky. You just want a really nice, clean contrast. Okay, next we're going to use the Remove Background feature of PowerPoint 2010. So because this actually had a really clean contrast, it worked pretty much perfectly on the first click, which is fairly unusual for this tool. If you do end up with areas like this that aren't marked for deletion, you can use the Mark Areas to Delete tool to remove what you need. If you end up having to adjust it a lot, you might want to try a different picture. I actually had to try several different ones before I settled on this one. Okay, before we add the sky back in, let's frame our picture. I'll just turn on the grid line so you can see where I'm putting the frames, which are just two skinny rectangles on each side. These will be used for our crisscross reveal. Since we've removed the original sky, we're going to create a new sky in the background so we can move it later on. This is just one sky I found on the Microsoft Office website as well. Let's stick it to the back, resize it to cover the screen, and now let's stretch it out so that it has room to move. Let's change the slide color from white to make it look better. I'm just going to put a black rectangle to the back of what we currently have. Now I'll group the sky and the tower to set up the reveal. And before we move forward, let's just duplicate the slide to save it for the next step. At this point, we take the sky and crop it so that it stays in the same position but just gets shortened. These steps will all make sense once we finish. And great, our tower is now ready for the reveal sequence. This trick starts with the two bars flying in from opposite sides. So we're first going to add a fly-in animation to both bars and have the left flying in from the right and the right coming in from the left. Now we're going to adjust these to both start with previous and to be 1.5 seconds in duration. But that's an arbitrary timing. Feel free to use what works for your purposes. The second key to this trick is using a split animation on your tower. We want it to start from the middle and go out across. The default timing is half a second, and since we want it to end with the flying bars, let's give it a one second delay so everything ends at 1.5 seconds. However, you can see there's a bit of a problem. Even though the animations end at the same time, they don't look to be in sync. So here comes the challenging part of syncing them up, at least to a level where they look somewhat decent. Play around with both the delay and the timing of the split animation until it seems to work. Use the end time of the flying bars as your anchor. What worked pretty well for me was 0.35 seconds duration and 1.15 seconds of a delay. And that took a few minutes of trial and error. And this was the final result. Now if you get really good at this, you can actually have the bars flying in at all four sides and use a box shape animation with it, kind of the more advanced version of this. Now we're ready to move our sky. Let's just go to the duplicate slide that we created before. First, add another black rectangle to create a screen on the right side of the sky. Ungroup the sky. Next, add a motion path to it that stretches out to the left. Make sure it's completely straight by holding down shift as you're dragging it. We're going to extend the time of the motion path to 10 seconds so that the sky doesn't fly by too fast. 
Okay, all we need now is to create one more screen on the left side so that it covers up the sky as it moves to the left. And send the sky to the back. And there you go, you're done. Here's what we've made. So now I want to show you how to do the window sequence because it's a bit easier for earlier PowerPoint versions and because it's a useful skill for 2010 users as well. The good thing is that you can steal your moving sky right from the tower. Next, find a window that has one single color in the middle, such as white. This picture I also got from the office website. And this is very simple. You just click Set Transparent Color and you're basically done. Let's just tone down the sky color so that it blends better with the window. And here it is. Now I promised earlier version users that I'd show you a workaround to remove the background. Now this is sort of a crude, quick and dirty way, and Photoshop users are probably going to cringe, so I apologize, but it does work. Every computer should have some sort of really basic picture tool, such as MS Paint. What you do is paste your tower in here, then simply trace over the background with a color that is not in your picture, in this case red. Then paste the picture where you want it to go and use that transparent color tool that I just showed you to remove the background. And as you can see, about five minutes worth did a pretty good job. And the more patience you have, the better it'll be. And that's it. Hopefully you learned at least one new thing that was helpful to you. If you want to see more tutorials like this, please like and comment on the video. I'd really appreciate it. I do encourage you to really experiment with these techniques, play around with them, be creative, as what I showed you is just a very small fraction of what's possible. Thanks a lot for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.